very few notes. <laughs> now, I, I just want to say right now that I am very, very humbled that uh, God put me on Randy's heart. And I'm very humbled that Randy heeded that and allowed me to do this tonight. Uh, I know Randy doesn't turn the pulpit over to very many people very often. So that's very humbling to me that he has enough confidence in me and in our Lord that the Lord will use this tonight. And as a little bit of testimony, about four years ago, Randy asked me to speak on a Wednesday night. And as soon as he asked me, I broke out in a sweat. I was nervous as all get out. I was nervous. But you know, about three weeks ago when he asked me to do this, I, I've had a peace about it. I've had an excitement about it. So if it's for nobody else but me, I pray that God will, will speak through me tonight and it'll all be about him and not me and um, that his name be glorified. Before I start, too, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this. Um, Randy may have paid me some money because I had some followers come tonight to, to hear me preach, you know. And I'd like to introduce them. I've got three people here tonight. Two of them I work with. One is Jennifer Williams. The other one's Chip Woods. Would you all wave, wave your hand over there? Those are two of my co-workers. And, and back there at the back is my brother, my oldest brother, Doug. And uh, they, they've all come to hear me. And I hope I don't let them down. But most of all, I hope I don't let my Lord down tonight. Uh, the title of my message tonight, as you can see, is um, Complacency. The definition, I looked it up on the Internet. The definition of complacency is satisfied, not willing to change, where you're at, don't want to move. And whenever I started praying about what to preach on and what to talk about tonight, I got to thinking I, I had several things that I wanted to speak on and several things I wanted to talk about. But then I got to thinking about this crowd. This crowd is, is you know, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but it's an older group. You're either, you're, you're either close to retirement or you're in retirement or you're really fixing to retire, you know. And, and I'm 59 years old, so I'm getting close to retirement. Hallelujah. But I got to thinking about that. The older we get, the more complacent we get. And, and that means that we, whether we think or whether we know or whatever it is that we're satisfied where we're at. And I, I really believe some of the scriptures that I'm going to read tonight I think will, will help us to understand that it don't matter how old you are or whatever condition you're in, there's always something that we can do for the Lord whether it's a phone call, whether it's writing a card, whatever it may be, there's something that we can do. Whether it's just smiling at somebody when you pass by them, whether it's putting an extra $20 in the offering plate, whatever it may be, whatever God leads you to do, there's always something that we can do. The, the first scripture that I want to read tonight is out of Proverbs 132. And this is where... I basically got the title of this message is complacency. For the waywardness of the inexperienced will kill them, and the complacency of fools will des destroy them. That's not only speaking to individuals. That's speaking to our church. That's speaking to a, a group of, of people. That if we get complacent and we're satisfied where we're at, then eventually we'll wither and die. So... It's my, my prayer tonight that some of what I say 
will uh, work in your hearts and your lives that if you've got to a point in your life to where you're satisfied where you're at, then think again and pray about it because God wants more out of us. Um, I, I, I thought about um, the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. Complacency almost killed them. They was willing to go back to Egypt and die in Egypt and never see the promised land. They'd never seen what was planned for them. You know, and I really believe that as, as a church, that's the same with us. If we're satisfied just sitting in the pew and we're satisfied to let somebody else do it, then eventually we're going to die on the vine. So anyway, that, that's part of that. So I, I want to go to Ephesians um, 4.16 now. And, and now you got to understand, I'm not Randy Sutherland. So this is going to be sort of sporadic, hit and miss, and just some of the scriptures that God's put on my heart that... Uh, We'll deal with uh, complacency, with growth, and where we need to be. One other thing before I go any further. Toddy, am I speaking loud enough for you? Amen, sister. I, I got chewed out before the service. I, I got to keep this microphone up next to my mouth. Okay, this is Ephesians 4.16. From him, the whole body is fitted and knit together by every supporting ligament promotes the growth of the body for the building up, it, up itself in love by, prop, uh, by the proper working of each individual. That tells me that we're all instruments in this church's function, in this church's existence. We've all got something to do. And, uh, you know, I mean, like I said earlier, whether it's writing a card, whether it's uh, calling someone, whether it's going to the hospital, whether it's going to the nursing home, there's something. Whether it's baking cookies or something for like vacation Bible school we had last week. Um, you know, there's always something that we can do. And uh, we need to work together. You know, the, the foot can't work without the head, so we, we've all got to work together. My next, my next verse is in Philippians one six. It says, I'm sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So in other words, you know, God's not going to start something in us and let us hang there and not, not ever finish what he started. God finishes what he starts. And, uh, you know, uh, that's the same way with, with this church. He started this church, and he's not going to let it go. He's not going to let it die. But it's, it's going to take us to keep it going. And, and like I say, this, this is probably going to be short and sweet, but I, I hope that some of what I'm saying, that you'll think about it, of uh, where you're at in your own personal life, because... We are each part of this, this congregation. My next scripture is going to be Job 17.9. It says, Yet the righteous person will hold to his way, and the one whose hands are clean will grow stronger. I wrote out to the side of that in my Bible. It says, Keep moving forward. Don't ever stop. Just keep moving forward. As uh, Dan Pruitt used to say, he said, you know, put your mark at the end of that furrow and, and run your plow straight towards it. In other words, don't go to the left and don't go to the right, but keep your plow going straight and keep it moving forward for the Lord. Next, next one uh, is going to be 1 Peter 4, 7 through 11, and this talks about service. It says, now to the end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-headed and disciplined for prayer. Above all, keep your love for one another at full strength, 
since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Based on the gift they have received, everyone should use it to serve others. As good managers of the, of ver, of the varied grace of God, if anyone speaks, his speech should be like that of the oracles of God. If anyone serves, his service should be from the strength of the, from the strength that God provides, so that in everything God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. There, there's, some, there's some key points in these scriptures right here that, that I would like to touch on. Part of, of uh, complacency, I guess, too, is you're so comfortable in yourself that you find things wrong. We need to find things right with the church. And, you know, a, a lot of it, Ken, stems around music. Uh, there's a lot of complaints from time to time about music. And where I sit on that, I may not, I may not get a lot of amens on this. But I think if your heart's right, you're not going to pay attention to stuff that is, I mean, music is, a, is a, a mighty part of worship. And it sets up our preaching service. But come into the congregation with such a spirit that whatever music is sung, whatever music is played, let it touch your heart, let it fill your heart. Don't look for something else that's not being sung, that's not being done, or that, you know, just, I guess basically it's what I'm saying is get your heart right. You know, get your heart right. And uh, the, the last scripture that I want to read tonight is Psalms 92. And there, there's a lot of uh, good stuff in, the, in this chapter of Psalms, but there's uh, one verse towards the end that I'll, I'll expound on a little bit, but I want you to listen to the word, words in Psalms 92. It is good to praise the Lord, to sing praise to your name, Most High, to declare your faithful love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. With, with ten string harp, and with the music of the lyre. For you have made me rejoice, Lord, by what you have done. I will shout for joy because of the works of your hands. How, mag how magnificent are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. A stupid person does not know, a fool does not understand this. Though the wicked sprout up like grass, and the evil doers flourish, they will be eternally destroyed. But you, Lord, are exalted forever. For indeed, Lord, your enemies, indeed your enemies will perish. All evildoers will be scattered. You, you have lifted up my horn like the, that of the wild ox. I have, I have been anointed with oil. My eyes look down on my enemies. My ears hear, hear evildoers when they attack me. The righteous thrive like palm trees and they grow like cedar trees in Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they thrive in the courtyards of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green, to declare the Lord is just, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. I'd like to go back to, to uh, verse 2. Start with that. It says, to declare your faithful love in the morning. Get up of a morning and praise the Lord. Praise Him for what He's about to do that day, you know. And then at night, it says, for your faithfulness at night. In other words, you're praising Him for what He did all day long is the way I, I see that. And then what I'd said earlier about the age of this group, there in verse uh, 14, this tells me, that God will still use us in our old, older age. 
It says, they will still bear fruit in old age, healthy and green. You will still bear fruit. Don't let your age be a crutch. Don't let your health issues be a crutch. Allow God to use you. And then there's one thing that I would like to, to read that I've wrote down that I heard several years ago, and it's been true in my life. Uh, a young man made this statement. He said, when God moves in you spiritually, He will move you physically. In other words, if God moves you spiritually, you're not going to sit still. You're going to be doing something. And He'll probably, nine times out of ten, move you into something different, some different area than where you're at right now. And, and it may be out of your comfort zone, like where I'm at right now. You know, and, and I'm not saying that to put anything on me. I'm just saying that you need to be willing to be moved if God moves you. And that's about all I've got to say tonight, but I just, I, that was on my heart that lots of times our churches, and I'm, I'm talking to the church as a whole, uh, that we get complacent, that we get settled in, and that we don't really want to move, that we don't want to change, uh, you know, that we don't want to spend more money to uh, do something that might reach more people, you know. Uh, if God's given us that money and we don't use it, then God can take it away. And if God's given us health and He's given us our next breath to serve Him and to, and to praise Him and we don't do it, He can take it away. I've asked uh, Ken tonight to sing hymn number 472 for our invitation. And in that, in the course, it says that I'm satisfied with Jesus. But the real question is, is Jesus satisfied with me? So, we're going to go into invitation right now, Ken, if you come up and sing that for us. And I'll be down front, and if, if there's somebody that needs to come and pray or, or give their life to, to Jesus or, or make a decision on uh, something that God's been dealing with you, I, I'd be more than happy to pray with you. Um, and let's, let's get it all settled tonight. And my prayer for this church and for this group of people is that God would move in our lives and that we wouldn't stop at nothing to reach people for him. Let me pray, and then, then, Ken, I want you to sing that for me, if you would. Lord, I pray that everything that's been said and done tonight, I pray that it'll bring honor and glory to you. Lord, I pray that uh, our hearts would be softened that your spirit and that your hand would penetrate it and that it would move. Lord, help us never, never to be satisfied where we're at. Help us to always look for ways and listen to your spirit and be willing to move if you ask us to move. Lord, just be with us and bless this song now and bless Ken as he sings it. And I pray that your spirit would move during this time. For it's in your name I pray.